This game is not good. Welcome back. It's your boy Double D. Today we are going to be looking at Thirsty Sword Lesbians. How did this game end up in my hands? Well, <laughs> I uh, saw that this won the highest award at the Ennies this year. Ennies is an award show uh, that's done every year at Gen Con. I think it put this game on a lot of people's radar. So uh, <laughs> I just had to check it out and... Uh, <laughs> Boy, I wish I hadn't. <laughs> so what is this game? Well, uh, I, I will give you the one sentence sell right from the book. It is about telling queer stories with friends. <laughs> this game is, is something else. It is something else. It's done by uh, Evil Hat Games, and it was written uh, by April Kit Walsh. Um, I think I can boil it down to... Uh, three main reasons why this game is terrible. <laughs> and number one, let's just get right into it. <laughs> it is creepy as hell. <laughs> All the stuff that you're taught to fade to black to when you're doing an RPG is the stuff that you're supposed to highlight in this game. <laughs> really, really, really weird. It is hyper-sexualized. I mean, that is the whole point of this game. So, why is it creepy? Well, for one thing, they, they have a whole section on safety and consent. But I did not see one thing, and I may have missed it. I'll, I'll admit, I did not read this book cover to cover. I, I kind of picked out some highlights. So if I'm wrong, someone please let me know. I saw no warnings that this game was not for kids none whatsoever and after looking at uh miss uh, kit walsh's twitter i don't know um so in addition to that in the context of the game there are uh things your lesbian character supposedly can do <laughs> and one of those is uh flirting so, <laughs> under the uh, the flirting ideas, show interest in their sword, share an embarrassing story or picture. Is that like revenge porn? <laughs> Discover there's only one bed. What the fuck? <laughs> Ask them to help you try on clothes or take them off. And stay up all night talking about your traumas. Yes, that's what they have as flirting in this. It's probably as good a time to get this out in the open as any, but uh, April Kit Walsh is a trans male to female person. And uh, I, I got no problem with that. Um, I will even call you she, April. But one thing I will not call you is a lesbian. I refuse... To call you a biological woman. I am sorry. Um, you will have to forgive me that. Um, so it sort of explained a lot why this seemed really odd. Um, I know some lesbians very close in my real life. I've known some throughout my life. They do not act like this. <laughs> this is as if an alien read the worst thing you could read and then tried to emulate what a lesbian is it is you would just think they do nothing but think about sex instead of just go through life and hold down jobs and act like normal people well going through uh april kate walsh's twitter it's pretty easy to see uh <laughs> she is not normal <laughs> not normal at all at least in my opinion um so yeah so that was the uh the flirting ideas um there's also a mechanic in the game <laughs> to kiss in a dangerous situation. It's this stuff is just woven throughout. Man, really, really creepy. <laughs> Reason number two: it is insanely woke. This game is really, really woke. It is 
very leftist, quite hateful too, in some areas. Uh, you can tell that uh, the author has a lot of uh, has a lot of baggage, has a you know pretty big chip on her shoulder. Um, for one thing, there is a huge area in the book uh, right at the start t- t- telling you that uh, no fascists or bigots are allowed to play. <laughs> It, uh, you have to believe, and they they do say you must believe this, uh, intersectional feminism and queer liberation. You must respect sex workers. You must respect neurodivergent people. You must respect fat people. It's just insane. One of the special moves in this book is to call on a toxic power. And then they write a very detailed description where uh, one of these uh, characters goes back to a church and essentially gets into it with a priest who may have information that could actually help the character. <laughs> and it is it is so obvious that uh, that Miss Walsh has uh, <laughs> has trouble uh, with religion and the church and, uh, let's just say established institutions. It borders on juvenile and amateur when you see it in the game. I mean, it, it is really, uh, evident. There's another, there's a whole glossary in the back. It's not a gloss. It's not really so much a glossary of the game. It's just a glossary on how to be, you know, a woke person in 2022. I mean, here are the first terms in the glossary. Arrow, aromantic, ace, asexual, bisexual, cisgender, cishet, demisexual, dyke, fash, gender, he, him, lesbian, intersex, lesbian, LGBT, LGBTQIA2S+. It reminds me of uh, that Star Trek The Next Generation when Data's resetting the Enterprise's code. (laughs) He just regurgitates like 25 different letters and numbers like that. That is actually in here. Uh, Neo-pronoun, non-binary, pansexual, patriarchy. This is the glossary of a role-playing game. An award-winning role-playing game. Polyamorous, polycule, queer, questioning, swerf, turf, trans, trans feminine, two spirit, valid, which is you. <laughs> Does that sound normal to you? I mean, look at the turf description to see what issues, you know, Miss Walsh has. A transgender excluding radical or reactionary feminist is someone who claims to be a feminist but undermines liberation for transgender people and by extension everyone marginalized on the basis of gender they are most excited about attacking trans women and major turf organizations have deep and well-documented ties to the religious right in the united states not welcome here what do you do with that that is someone's manifesto. That's not part of a role-playing game. There, I mean, there's there's others in here, too. LGBT is not good enough. Usually means cis gay men. Sometimes includes cis lesbians. Rarely may include bisexual people. And even less often, trans people. Don't say something is LGBT if you mean gay or lesbian and there's no bisexual or trans representation. This person is obsessed with trans stuff. (laughs) They wrote a game, I hate to say it, as a biological male about being a lesbian, and then just filled it with their manifesto on trans rights. If 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 you play this game, you are insane. If you if you enjoy this game, I don't know what to say. (laughs) unbelievable it, it the hate just drips through the pages of this i mean i i really hope the author gets some actual counseling and not and not counseling that just affirms you know what they already believe reason number three 
I didn't like this game. It's the Powered by the Apocalypse system, which I think is a stale, lazy, and overrated system. Sorry if you like it. You know, we'll just we'll just have to uh, go our separate ways here. But it just seems like a system just for weird, lazy people to put their own agendas into a game. It, it's it's ready made for that because it, these uh, skills they are simplified to a fault. It, it's almost meant to just reinforce certain behaviors because that's all you really have to choose from. It's, it's fertile ground for weirdos with agendas. And as far as the setting for the book itself, what is it, telling queer stories with friends? Oh, well, you can do it anywhere. You can be a pirate. You can be a space uh, ship captain. You can do this. You can do that. Well, I've always subscribed to the notion that if you can do everything you probably can't do anything really well. And I get the sense from that book. Uh, obviously, I did not play this game. I will never play this game. This game is not for me, <laughs> obviously. Um, by design, I think. <laughs> but the lack of a cohesive world, so to speak, um, if you were to take this game seriously, that would be a huge, huge stumbling block. But of course, it's not meant for that. Th this is... This game is simply a manifesto for hypersexual shenanigans. <laughs> but if you were to get into the nitty gritty of this game, I would I think you would find it pretty boring after a while. You know, you can only uh, flirt with someone to get to get them out of combat and then just describe how you're making out with another character. Ugh. There's a reason since the beginning people don't want to do this and it's because normal people and i stress that normal people are embarrassed when you bring this stuff up this stuff should stay in private you know behind closed doors so to speak just because you talk about you know sexual exploits and all that stuff it doesn't make it liberating it makes it weird it really does if if somebody in your group started talking about <laughs> making out with an NPC or another character, what would you do if, as a DM? Uh, I think most of you would just kind of <laughs> gently move things on and just say, okay, we get the picture, let's go. But that's the whole point of this game. There, there's really nothing else to it. There's something in here called Heartstrings where you're supposed to... Um, that's your sway over someone else. And I guess that's the uh, the interaction kind of mechanism. But it, it, it all seems to me to lead to just your character making out with another. Uh, what an insult, too. Um, if you're just like a normal, let's just say you're a normal woman who's, who's a lesbian. you know, and, you, and this was your first experience in role-playing games. You probably wouldn't be offended, of course. And even I'm not offended. It's just weird. And they, they would probably find it a little weird, too. And they'd probably they'd probably be like, well, you know what? No, thanks. <laughs> this whole role-playing thing is, uh, is not for me. So this does nobody any good at all. So in closing, I guess it's suffice to say I don't like this book. I, I pretty much hated it. Um, is there anything good in it? In an odd way, it has that art, the uh, Tumblr CalArts art style. But you know what? I actually don't have a problem with it here. This is, I suppose, the kind of a book it belongs in. So I'm not, I'm not going to um, bash the art in this book. You know, I'm sure there were a lot of artists who look. This is the style they do. It ain't for me. Probably ain't for you. But they like it, and they certainly have their audience. God bless you. Uh, like I said, I'm not gonna, uh, I'm not gonna say anything bad about the art, other than it's not my cup of tea. But I do think it belongs here. Where I have a problem with this art is when it starts bleeding into things it doesn't belong in, like D and D, and it is starting to bleed into D and D. If you uh, checked out my Radiant 
Citadel, the videos, uh, you'll see that. In at least one adventure, uh, the, the artwork is <laughs> full of this kind of style. Not appropriate. I'm going to ask you guys to like this video if you thought it was good. And go ahead and subscribe if you want to see more of this type of content. Well, not this type of content, no. <laughs> I do have some better things coming. I don't plan on only reviewing stuff I hate. Um, I want to do some retrospectives on stuff that I really liked, and maybe you like too. So I also do a series of shorts where I go through my library of uh, old uh, advanced D&D &D stuff, original D&D &D stuff. Uh, so if you like little quick hitters, check those out. So that's going to do it uh, for today, and uh, I will see you later on. Hope you have a great day. Goodbye.